Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of What Does Yolo Mean To Me? My name is Krista Belewa Mwabeng. I play the role of Lydia and I am your host for today. If you're serious about working here, there are some rules you will need to follow. Madam, I'm very serious about working here. Please consider me. Okay. Here on What Does Yolo Mean To Me, we get to meet you the fans to discuss what the Yolo TV series means to you as an individual and the impact it has made on your life, as well as touch on a few important adolescent sexual reproductive health issues which were highlighted in Yolo. Remember, one of the ways you can enjoy your good life is to ensure that you keep good personal hygiene by bathing at least twice a day, cleaning your private parts and using deodorant. Also, to enjoy a good life in this COVID-19 era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear a face mask, wash your hands with soap and a running water. Do not hug or shake hands. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your face and your mouth. Maintain physical distances of about two meters between you and others when in public places and avoid overcrowded places. Here with me are five individuals. I'll let them introduce themselves and tell us why they love YOLO. Alavanyo Geshen Bokete is my name. I am 17 years of age. I'm a student of the Noom Presbyterian Senior High School. YOLO has impacted so much into my life by educating me on peer pressure, especially here. Yeah. My name is Barbara Malcolm. Uh, I'm 19 and I'm a beautician. I like YOLO because it's good and I take advice from it. I'm Dada Mohammed, 18 years of age, and I'm a student of a Noom Presby Senior High School. I'm popularly known as Oxygen. YOLO is a TV series which helps we the youth to know more about life and prevent ourselves from social vices. Chisa Hana is my name. I'm 19 years of age, a student of Ghana Institute of Journalism. YOLO has been educative, my source of entertainment, informative. My name is Shalan Kwanda, 19 years of age and a graduate from Bachman Aviation College. Um, actually, watching YOLO, I learned a lot. It was actually fun. But I also learned that there are most guys out there who are not really into love. They just want sex from you. So with, as girls, we need to be very, very intelligent. We need to be smart when it comes to that. We don't have to succumb to any negative peer pressure. Today, we are going to talk about sexual favors and parenthood. Before that, let's watch a scene from the YOLO TV series. Charlie, people come Hey, see how they are well behaved too. Charlie, you see, you see, you see how it's right that we charge gate fees, eh? For blood me. George, but there's still one problem. Why what happened? Shika wants me to come upstairs with ten girls. And he added ten very beautiful girls. You did I say I warn you. Do you remember? Charlie, see, this thing you no know, be any big problem there like that. Sometimes then just they go give the girls money, then call cats. You don't say this be big men. They know they do in coastal girls like that. So relax, you no know, be any. I was the one in that room, and even me, I didn't have it easy with Shika. Guys. I'm scared. What is a sexual favor? To my understanding, sexual favor is accepting to have sex with someone to gain something. Sexual favor is engaging in sexual activity in exchange of something like money, grades, promotion, etc. Okay. Sexual favor is the act whereby individuals engage in romantic activities for gains and opportunities. Sexual favor it's exchange mostly involving sex or anything sexual, sexually related. Sexual favor is a physical exchange of sex in order to get things we need, like money, positions, etc. Do you know of a situation where someone demanded for or offered a sexual favor in exchange for something? This happens normally in universities where lecturers demand for sex before giving grades. And when people also are going for work, they ask for sex before the job is given to them. Yes, I know someone. That was in 2018 when I was about to write my BC exam. We had a large population in our class when we were in Form 2. But before we got to Form 3, our number had to decrease. And we realized that most of the boys were dropped out. The girls who were, excuse me to say, academically low were promoted instead of the boys who were somehow good in academics because of sexual favor. But in our year, we didn't get to find out the reason behind the repetition of the boys. As we completed the following year, the male students, which were my juniors back then, reported the issue to the head teacher and he was dismissed from the school. Okay, I wanted a job and I went to some product office and the manager wants me to be the assistant supervisor. But 
unless I have sex with you. And I was like, nah, I can't because of that, I lose the job. I wouldn't say I know, but of course, I've seen in the televisions and the news about how individuals engage in sexual activities for grades, for money, for job opportunities in high ranks and for promotions. Yes, I have. I've seen situations like that. Personally, I'm from the aviation school, and after graduation, I had this friend. We were both looking for employment as it was. So she had a friend working with a company, an airline company. She told me about it, and she was like, let me go and ask. So she went to ask, and the friend was like, oh, you have to see my boss. So seeing the boss, the boss was like, if she will exchange herself sex for the position, then it's available. I didn't agree with it, so I'm still here looking for employment. But she agreed, and now she's working with the airline, and she's actually making money. Do you think it is right for adolescents to engage in sex in exchange for favours? Okay, I don't think it is right for individuals to engage in sexual activities for favours because this act tarnishes the image and reputation of the individual and then destroys or disrupts the respect gained from others in the community for the person. In my opinion, adolescents must not engage in sex for favours. For some people, it's yes. For me, it's no. Yeah, because um, to me, I don't want an unexpected pregnancy. Some too, they will have the sex with you, but they will not give you the job. So you just, they will just have the sex with you, and that will be all. With the yes, I'll say if it can help you with your career, and you are not shy seeing your boss that you've been having that kind of activity with all the time, then it's a yes for me. You can go for it. But with others that we have other people like me that I can't do it. So with us, I'll say no because for me, I just can't be looking at my boss. Meanwhile, others, I see others working for it with their intelligence, their morale and everything. And I'll be there just be exchanging sex for um, the position or whatever it is. So I feel like it's cheating. So it depends on you, the individual. If you have that confidence, then you should. What are some of the negative effects of engaging in such arrangements? Teenage pregnancy, which can lead to school dropout, sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV, and AIDS. And all this um, bring about rejection by society, stigmatization, and then tarnish of their image. It can lead to stigmatization, unwanted pregnancies, and loss in position or your, of your current job if there is a change in power and a different boss comes around and he realizes you are not really fit for the position. Mm -hmm. Such arrangements can break about sexual transmitted diseases such as gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV and AIDS, which will make you uncomfortable and affect you negatively in the future. And it can also cause school dropouts and unwanted pregnancies. Let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about the topic. My name is Nelson So. I stay in Tema. I like Yellow so much because it teaches a lot about, you know, it guides us as adolescents, shape our lives. You know, we learn a lot out of Yellow. So I think I may recommend that to you. It's really necessary. Today, I think we are going to talk about sexual favor. Yes, sexual favor because, you know, everybody can relate. It is just an act of giving out sex in favor or in exchange of something. You know, a lot of people does that, which is really bad. Last year, a friend was looking for a job. And when she got there, the manager was, you know, requesting for sex before giving the work to him, the job to him, to her, sorry. And in other ways, even in our schools, it happens. Girls go in to lecturers just for sex, in for just to give them sex, in order for them to give them marks. I know. You know, I don't really think we as adolescents, we are supposed to exchange sex in favor of something else because it can lead to a so all sorts of things that, you know, you can't even mention. It's really bad. I don't think so. There are several negative effects, but the few I could talk about is teenage pregnancy, depression, fear, dissatisfaction of job. That's in terms of workplace. Our next topic is parenthood. Before we talk, let's watch this. Do you have a, a boyfriend? N no, please. Don't lie to me. I need you to tell me the truth. And don't worry, I will not use it against you if you have one, okay? Madam, I, I, I have one, but I don't love him. First, you don't have a boyfriend, now you have one. 
How am I supposed to trust you if you've started lying to me already? Madam, please, I want to change from all that. I'm sorry, dear. You're dismissed. Oh. Lydia. Madam. I'll consider you the job. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Please don't let me down. I promise I'll not let you down. I'll behave myself. Okay, because those who used to work there had to sack them because of their ways with boys. I want you to stay far away from the boys, especially those who stay here. Okay, thank you very much. What is parenthood? Parenthood is the act of being a parent and taking care of the responsibilities involved. But it depends on the responsibilities you are performing. That makes up for the parenthood. Let's say I'm doing some responsibility of a parent. I can't say I'm a parent because I'm taking care of, of my parents. So anyone who takes care of his or her child is a parent. Is parenthood only for biological parents? Why do you think so? I don't think parenthood is only for biological parents because there are some guardians who take the responsibilities of parenthood of the wards or the children they cater for and it makes them qualify to be called parents. Because everyone can be a parent, be it even our friends can be our parents. So long as they are leading us in the right path because mostly parents want the best for us. So if our friends are looking out for the best for us, then they can also be our parent. They can pretend to be our parent. In my opinion, parenthood does not only apply to biological parents. As far as you take full responsibility of the child, the upbringing of the child, you are a parent. People like nannies and neighbors are, can all be said to be parents because they take care of the child, the whereabouts of the child. Do you think elderly people who are not your parents have the right to ask you questions about your personal life, especially with issues relating to your reproductive health? Yeah, I believe by reasonable elders, because there are some elders, mostly the men, who like to ask questions relating to your reproductive health, mostly just to take advantage of us. So elders who want the best for us, elders who are reasonable and they are looking out for us and want to help us, I believe they can ask because there are some things that we can't tell our parents but we can tell other people. Of course, some elderly people who are specifically qualified in those aspects have the right to ask us in order to help us positively. This piece of advice offered to us by the elderly can help nurture and shape our lives in good ways for us to be prominent people in the future someday. It's not only my father or my mother who has the right to ask me questions about my sex life. Someone else somewhere can also do that. Let's listen to what some youth in other parts of the country have to say about the topic. Hi everyone, I'm Akusu Mimikwene. I am eight years of age and I live at Emma Community too. You know, it has had a great impact on my life. It has taught me more about peer groups, my sexual life and then my it has a lot about sex education. Parenthood is being parents specifically administering parental functions or responsibilities. And also, parents who does not apply to only biological parents. Anybody can be a parent. So far as the person is administering parental functions. And then, I think it is normal for an elderly person to ask a teenager or a teenager about his or her sexual life because who knows? So he or she will be able to advise the person on how to do things and what not to do. Do you know any boy or girls engaging in sex for failures? What are some of the negative effects of engaging in such arrangement? Should elderly people reprehend young people when they find out they are sexually active? Or should they use it as an opportunity to talk to them about sexual reproductive health and rights? Let us know what you think by sending your comments via video or text to our social media platforms at YOLO TV series and drop a comment. Your next host of What Does YOLO Mean To Me goes by the name Etona Baby. She plays the role Yasmin. You all know how much I'm crushing on Cyril, right? Do you think I'm harassing him? Well, hold your thoughts and join me in the discussion in the next episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me. See you guys.
I'm a job. You should the Emily Brown. It's still good work. <coughs> Yasmin? Yes, Emily. Arrival. What do you mean? Yeah. I have to know. You have to know what? You've always been the love of my life. Yasmin, come on. That was child's play. Not for me, Sarah. It is the end of another educative but fun episode of What Has You Been To Me. I have been your host for today. Also, to enjoy a good life in this COVID-19 era, we have to be cautious to stay safe. Always wear a face mask, wash your hands with soap and running water. Do not hug or shake hands. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your face and your mouth. Maintain physical distances of about 2 meters between you and others when in public places. And avoid overcrowded places. Make a date next week for another exciting episode. Remember to live a good life. Good life. Live it well. Good life. It's an everyday thing. YOLO. You only live once. Kisses.